All right, so this is a new Super Metroid speedrun by Zosty, which is like one second faster than his last run, his last world record run that he got like a year ago. Um, but there's some new tricks and stuff in it, and I'm just so impressed with, uh, I mean, people who speedrun this game as a whole that uh, I wanted to put together this commentary for my brother uh, and, I don't know, anybody else who wants to watch it. Now, I'm not an expert in Super Metroid. I don't speedrun it. I, you know, I'm not even really part of the community or anything. I just, like, watch streamers and watch speedruns every once in a while so I know, like, some of the lingo and how some of the speed tricks work. I can't do any of them, but I know how some of them work and just kind of wanted to talk through it because, like, ultimately it'd be more fun to, like, sit down and watch this with my brother and talk about it, but... We just never have time to get together and hang out. So, anyway, this is a speed run. It's done in like 40 minutes and 45 seconds, I think, something like that. So, I just want to like talk through all of the tricks and stuff that happen during this run. So, the very first thing is like a trick that's really hard to do. It's called Moonfall. It essentially uses kind of a mechanic that's weird when you use Moonwalk. So when you use Moonwalk, and for whatever reason, when you're shooting and you're aiming down or something like that, and you do like a spin jump, something happens where, like, the there's normally like a terminal velocity that Samus can fall at, called like the, um, what do they call it, uh, the fall speed cap or something, I don't know exactly what the term is they use, but essentially, a couple times in this run, they'll do this thing, this Moonfall, where it unlocks the acceleration for falling downward. So, like, it doesn't stop Samus from, like, like continuing to build speed as she's falling. So you'll see it in a couple places, um, no, most notably when they first get to, to Zebes, 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 whatever, and you go down, like, the escape shaft. You'll notice how fast she goes, and she even goes so fast that she, like, goes right through one of the platforms. It's pretty cool. So, one of the other things you'll see going on is you'll see, like, you'll see Sam is, like, aiming up and down over and over while running, and that's not just like a, you know, it's not like a nervous twitch or something like that. It's a technique called arm pumping. So, like, every time you aim up or aim down, Samus gets advanced forward by an extra pixel, and so over the course of the run, that can save several seconds, which is pretty significant in, uh, in this speed run. So you'll see that aiming up and down over and over and over uh, as we progress through. So overall the like the route of the game like normally when let's see if I can I had a one one black or one gray line at the bottom of the screen that I just had to move out um <clears throat> normally when you like sort of the intended route of completing Super Metroid is first you fight Kraid then you fight uh, Fantoon and then you fight Dragon and then you fight Ridley just as you progress through the game and you pick up items that's kind of the natural flow of how you would fight all the bosses so here's that moonfall I was talking about so you see how fast Samus falls when you're able to unlock that fall speed cap um, so the fastest way that they found to complete the game in this sort of any percent category is uh, first going to do fan tune and getting gravity suit and then circling back down to I mean you'll kind of see the route but like circling back down through Brinstar again and going down into Norfair and fighting Ridley second and then coming back up, getting Kraid on the way back up, and then going and fighting Dragon in Meridia last. And there are several reasons for that. I mean, it is it is like shortest path overall, but also like collecting speed booster at a strategic time. There's certain power-ups like super missiles and power bombs that you get earlier than you normally would. I mean, early super missiles I don't think really changes the route all that much. You just don't have to fight... Uh, you don't have to fight Spore Spawn, which you normally have to fight. And so you'll also notice, like, some of the power-ups will be skipped. Actually, most of the power-ups will be skipped, because there's only a very small number of things that are actually needed to beat the game, and I'll kind of talk about more of that later. But just overall, some of this movement stuff, like, on the way through that room, and then on the way back during the escape, 
I always fall down into those pits between the pillars, but like, no. <laughs> and then this room, this uh, version of that room, they call the climb. And I've tried learning how to do that with those wall jumps. It's just insane. I can't. So you'll also see like Zost is managing to jump up those platforms really fast. Like it seems like, you know, when you're playing, it's like you jump onto a platform and then you jump again by opening that missile door. is just awesome, by the way. Um, you jump onto a platform and then you jump again and you feel like you're going as fast as you can maybe, but like when you're watching that, you're just like, that's really fast. And so he's doing this technique called a ledge grab, which essentially like, so when Samus jumps up onto a platform, there's like kind of an arc, right? She's doing a spin jump and she has to kind of like arc up over the top of the platform and then land on it. Well, Samus's hitbox, right? Like essentially the size of her on the screen that interacts with objects like walls and floors and enemies and things like that. Her hitbox changes size depending on what she's doing, right? So when she's a morph ball, her, her hitbox is really short. When she's standing up, her hitbox is really tall. While each of the different animations has kind of a different that escape, by the way. Like normally you have to go up and you have to go the other way to bomb through the blocks to get through. Uh, but no, the that's a the quick the quick bomb uh, escape. So this is one of three energy tanks they're gonna collect. So back to the ledge grabs the quick climbing technique. So when Samus is spin jumping, her, her hitbox is still pretty small. And when you're when Samus is in the air and she's like crouching and aiming down or up, her hitbox is a little bit bigger. So what you can do is you can be spin jumping, get over the top of a ledge, and then expand her hitbox by aiming up or down, and then boom, you're touching that platform faster than you would without having to kind of fall down onto it. And then from there, you can immediately jump again. And so it's a very simple technique, but it's amazing kind of how much of a difference it makes and how pleasant it is to watch as a result. And then so here's the technique called a mock ball. So you see how fast she's moving in Morph Ball like that. And that's because there's a trick you can do where you kind of do an extra jump press in the air. And then as you land, you kind of Hadouken the control pad forward and then morph into a ball and keep forward dash momentum. Like as fast as you're going when you're dashing, you can keep that same amount of speed. You'll see that a few more times in the run too, like right here. So this is a mock ball. And I love breaking through this. I forget what that enemy's called, but hitting that enemy with the bomb and then shooting it one more time and then grabbing the missiles between each of the bombs. Really fun to watch. So yeah, that mock ball trick. It's, uh, I've been able to do the mock ball and I've been able to collect those super missiles. So normally, like right now we have super missiles, but we're not supposed to have super missiles. You're supposed to go fight Spore Spawn first, but because you can do the mock ball and make it under those those walls that that come down uh, you can you can get to that super missile pack earlier than you normally would I think normally it the game would expect you to have speed booster to make it through that in time and so now we can basically skip the score the whole spore spawn area and move on into this green green brin star I think it's called green brin star I mean I say I think it's called green brin star but like there's no I don't know of any official names for this stuff. I'm talking about like terminology that's used in like the, you know, the gaming community essentially. Just so all of these little movements are just so every single one of these rooms is super well. Oh, here was here's Red Tower by the way. You're not supposed to be able to do any of this. So, some of those jumps you're supposed to have high jump to to reach uh, to get past all of those enemies, you're supposed to have an ice beam, but like if you are really, really, really good at timing and doing wall jumps, you can shoot up, wall jump up past those enemies, follow your shot up just as it hits the ceiling and breaks the blocks up there, and then you can get through. So normally you need like ice beam and some other stuff to get up here, which is when you would collect power bombs. But now like haven't even gone into Norfair yet, have power bombs already. Uh, I'm trying to think, so like ice beam you would need, high jump. Uh, which means you would need speed booster because you're supposed to have speed booster to get ice beam But so skipping all of that stuff. This is the fastest way to get power bombs and then you can come up here and 
there are going to be a few more fancy techniques to uh, to get to the wrecked ship to fight Fantoon and then get uh, and get the gravity suit. So normally you would have Varia suit here. You would have beaten Kraid, but like those crab enemies, I think they do like 100 damage or something like that. So if you get hit one time, you're basically almost dead. All right, here's the moat. Watch him. He's going to wall jump off the far edge of this platform. That's called a CWJ or continuous wall jump. It's just, it's a, it's like a, I think maybe a two pixel trick. Maybe it's pixel perfect. I don't remember, but essentially, you know, the zone around the zone in which you can wall jump is within just a few pixels of a wall. Right. And so what she did is like jumped off the far side of that platform and was still spinning and managed to encounter there's like a you know there's a here's the platform right and there's like a corner sticking out just a very tiny corner that's like the zone that you can wall jump in and so if you manage to go through that and then I think it's a frame perfect trick like you have to hit you have to hit the jump button within one frame maybe it's two frames I don't remember um but then you can essentially wall jump within that tiny little zone there and there's a there's a nice setup for it so the speedrunners can get it somewhat consistently it's still pretty tough if you miss it you can try it again or you can do there's like a there's a, a double bomb jump technique that you can do to get through all right fantoon so normally fantoon so that was that was one cycle so fantoon you can see he flies around for a little bit There's a second cycle. Normally, Fantoon should be dead right now. It took three cycles because I think I think Zos messed up. I don't know if that was totally Fantoon's fault. Sometimes you can kind of blame the game and RNG random stuff happening. But I think maybe Zos just didn't quite fire the super missile in time. But anyway, normally, so those cycles, right? Normally you can do Fantoon in two cycles, and sometimes the cycles happen really fast. Like, he he only flies for a split second before he opens his eye and you can shoot him. Sometimes it's like a medium amount of time before he opens his eye, and sometimes it's a long amount of time. So like fast, medium, or slow. They usually call those cycles fast, medium, or slow. And when you're fighting Fantoon, the best is to do two cycles or one cycle. It's possible to do one cycle, but I don't usually see people doing one cycle yet. Um, not commonly. There's like one runner, his name is Emmett, who has had a lot of attempts where he's gotten a single cycle. It's crazy to watch. I have to show you a, a different time, but it's really cool. Um, but anyway, typically what you want is a fast, fast, right? You want a fast cycle after a fast cycle. And then, oh, by the way, like clipping through the floor, go back and watch that real quick just now. Um, he just like, there's a trick you can do. I have no idea how to do it. I have to look it up. But like, you can just like kind of clip through the floor. So clipping, like basically going through a solid surface when you're not supposed to be able to um so yeah normally you want a fast fast i th i don't remember exactly what that was i feel like it was a medium medium or like a mid mid uh, mid mid fast or maybe it was a slow mid fast something like that but anyway that fantoon fight took a lot longer than it would in an ideal situation but this is still a world record run which is pretty awesome so just more fancy maneuvering and every single one of these rooms like i said is rehearsed like just countless times um i should at some point i should show you like you know somebody one of their videos where they show and yeah by the way just like skipping through that room with no grab uh no grappling beam grappling beam is not a thing people get um but uh i sometimes i like just watching like the the full vod uh like the video on demand the full video of people like doing like their practice sessions where just like they're just practicing the same room like over and over and over and they usually have like an emulated like an emulated version of the game on a cartridge where they can like reload the same room multiple times so just like they practice the room reload it practice the room reload it practice the room and it's just a matter of like a combination of button presses on your controller so people can put like essentially the game a modified version of the game on like a custom cartridge and uh they can do all kinds of tweaks and stuff to the to the to the rom on the cartridge to make it so it's really suitable for practice and so they can easily save in certain spaces or you know change certain settings in the game or whatever just for the sake of practice um and yeah so watching people like practice some of these rooms repeatedly and hammer these tricks to get them down pat and sort of add them to the bank of muscle memory is just really impressive 
All right, so we have gravity suit, and so now gravity suit, even though, you know, normally people get Varia to protect from the heat in Norfair, gravity suit has the same effect. You don't actually need Varia to protect you from heat damage in Norfair. Um, but Varia suit does also have the damage that you take from everything. So there's still a certain level of vulnerability there um, because I, if I remember right, uh, Gravity Suit doesn't actually provide any sort of damage mitigation. I think Varya only does that. So I think he's still taking the same amount of damage from everything that he normally would. He's really just able to go through water and um, protected from heat. So I'm gonna grab the Spazer Beam here. And so you'll see uh, he ends up not picking up Plasma Beam at all because it's just, it's way too out of the way. Like it costs, you know, somewhere in the realm of an extra 45 to 60 seconds to go get it, whereas uh, it actually only saves you, you know, 30 seconds or something like that. I'm just making up those numbers, but essentially it costs more time to go get it than it does than, than you save. So strategically breaking the glass tube there so it's already broken and ready to navigate out of later on. So over there is uh, Kraid's Lair. Skipping by Kraid right now because it's faster to go through it later when you have a uh, speed booster. And you come right by here later on anyway, so there's really no advantage to going there and uh, doing it now unless you wanted Varia for the additional damage protection. So here's the second of two energy tanks that, uh, was gonna, that he's going to be picking up. Um, he has to get three energy tanks to protect from uh, Mother Brain's like ultimate attack, basically. Uh, that's assuming you get Varya, also, because uh, I think it does three energy tanks worth of damage if you have Varya suit and maybe gravity, assuming gravity does damage mitigation, but I don't think it does. Um, but if you have Varya, I'm pretty sure you take three energy tanks worth of damage from the Rainbow Beam, um, whereas if you don't have Varya, you take six energy tanks worth of damage. So it's either grab Varya or grab six energy tanks, like three additional energy tanks. It's faster to just get Varya, so that's why. Otherwise, probably just skip Varya. So there's skipping the the doors on the way to Ice Beam here. Normally you need Speed Booster, but a uh, well-timed Mach Ball will get you through all of that. So grab an Ice Beam here. So that's the second of the three beams. We're also going to get Wave Beam later on. Um, and then the combination of Wave Beam, Ice Beam, and Spazer charge attacks does a pretty decent amount of damage um, well enough to basically do the entire second half of the Mother Brain fight. And most of the damage on Ridley comes from uh, the charge attacks. Well, maybe not most, but a good portion of the, char of the damage comes from charge attacks. And so on the way back, getting through that first door is like almost impossible. Normally you have to go up and around to, to get back. Wastes a lot of time. Zos can just, and speedrunners can just like, you know, come right under that door, no problem. And then just, you know, more epic navigation with, you know, one mistake or two here or there, but like almost flawless. And so I think he only, I think he only gets one power bomb pack, just the one power bomb pack that he's got, and then 10 super missiles and 15 normal missiles. That's essentially, that's, by the way, Bubble Mountain there is what that room is called. Normally you go down and around and climb up and stuff, but a trick with, you know, some nice place wall jumps and everything and get you up to speed booster really quick. So, yeah, normally you go down and all the way around and come up the other side, collect a wave beam on the way, and then come up top here to get to speed booster. He's basically just going to go through the reverse. So grabbing speed booster first, then going down, grabbing wave beam, and then continuing down into, you know, the acid there that normally you wouldn't be able to go into, and then down into lower Norfair. Nor lower Norfair. More arm pumping, saving fragments of a second at a time. I think he's going to do a little farm here, you know, just farming, just gathering some resources. So full on energy, 15 missiles, three power bombs, you know, eight super missiles. That's all a pretty good count of stuff that you want to have uh, going toward lower Norfair. Heading over here to grab wave beam, skip those missiles. 
He's already got all the ammo he's gonna get. So, one more energy tank is all he's gonna get as far as resources. He'll get some other power-ups and stuff, but... You'll see that, like, a, some of the other things, like Space Jump. Like, Space Jump's just a waste of time to get. They have techniques to just surpass anything that Space Jump would be needed for. So yeah, heading down into here, normally you come up from the other side of this room, where he's headed right now, and this acid is all the way up to the level that it's at. So yeah, normally you come into this room and the acid starts coming up from the floor and you have to run through before it gets to you, but he's already got gravity suit. He like doesn't need it. All right, here's, this, here's the lower Norfair entry. Does something here called a short charge. I'll explain more about that in a second, but you see he got it. So yeah, no space jump needed. <laughs> so yeah, the short charge, really cool technique. So normally, you know, you just hold on the dash button, you run and Samus gets a uh, speed booster or shine spark, right? It goes fast enough to charge a shine spark. So you can do something called a short charge, which I, so I'd sometimes, I, I thought of it once as in terms of like, um, and you'll see why the way, why the beams were switched just now. This navigation through lower Norfair is really cool, but here's another short charge. So essentially think of Samus's speed as like the P meter from Super Mario 3, right? So as you're running, the meter slowly fills, and it's got those little notches on it, and it fills up. Um, and then once it fills up, then you can jump and you can fly with the tail, with the raccoon tail and everything, right? So with Samus, imagine that P meter, but like there's like a series of notches, and the game adds a notch based on certain conditions. Essentially what that is, is you see that like when Samus is running, there's like, the sprite has like 12 different I think it's 12 different frames in the animation. So like her legs moving, right? There's like different different frames that, uh, that show her run animation. And so when her legs are in a very specific position, there's like one frame out of that set of that run animation, where if you're pushing the A button during that frame in the run animation, it will add one notch to like her P meter basically. So you don't need to be holding down the dash button constantly, you just need to be holding the dash button on that specific frame. And so if you're running and you can manage to push the dash button specifically during those frames, you can build up all the notches you need to have Shine Spark run speed without gaining a whole ton of speed because you only accelerate as you're holding the button, right? So if you're only pushing the button intermittently just for those frames, you can charge up the full P-meter, but it takes absurdly good timing because you need to do it on every 12th frame of the animation. And the animation accelerates as you get closer, as that P-meter fills, so it's very tricky. All right, so now Ridley. It, the, it goes so fast, I can't even keep up. So. If you have one beam equipped, aside from charge, and you equip power bombs, and you charge, you can do like a special beam attack, right? So if you have wave beam equipped, it does this this thing where these four pods come from the corners of the screen and try to and, 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 and hit whatever it is, and they kind of fly around the screen a little bit. But if you position it right, you can get these X factors, they call them, uh, to hone in and hit exactly where your target is. and. Zos manages to get four of them in a row. It's very difficult because if they don't hit, they kind of just circle and fly around the room and stuff and until they hit something or they just run out. Uh, but you can't shoot another X Factor until all of the particles are gone. And so he manages to time, I think he did four of them, um, to all hit Ridley and then finish them off with super missiles and charge attacks. And so just absurdly fast uh, Ridley fight there. And so that X Factor ability is useful. So you've seen him like turning on beams and turning them back off, right? So he's got he's got just wave on still because I think he's got some more X Factors he's gonna do on Batuun, the snake mini boss, uh, a little bit later. So he's gonna leave it on wave beam. He's not even gonna bother going into the pause menu to turn his other beams on until after that part of the game. Um, 
yeah, so let's see. Ridley had, there was an energy tank after Ridley's room. He's not going to get that one. There's one that's faster in Meridia that he's going to grab on his way through. Here's another floor clip that he does. And you've seen a bunch of times he's done this damage boost, which is essentially, you know, when you get hit by something, in a lot of games you get knocked back from getting hit by an enemy, right? And if you use that to advantage, they call it a damage boost, because you're essentially taking damage to get knocked in an intended direction to save time. And so they've gotten really good at figuring out how the damage, how the knockback works in this game, where like, I think if you push like the jump button right as you get hit and you push the opposite direction, you'll fly that direction and you can take advantage of that huge knockback, that damage boost uh, to go in directions really fast. It's actually happened a bunch of times in this run and I kind of forgotten to talk about it, but um, yeah, it saves a bunch of time too. Another tiny mock ball there. Um, he's just running through these, uh, I think these guys are called Key Hunters. They do a ton of damage, but he had a lot of health to spare, so he was able to just run through one of them. And that fast fall through the those platforms, I've done that a ton of autom like on accident. I don't know how you do, do how you actually do that on purpose. That little damage boost off that guy there is really cool too. Saves having to fall down and then jump back up again. All right, so I think done in Norfair. Gonna just run back over to the elevator up to Crade's lair. Finish off Crade. I don't think I don't think he even grabs anything in Crade's lair with the exception of Varia. Um, Oh, I'm, I'm covering up the chat right now because uh, language and <laughs> distraction and that kind of thing, but there's somebody in the chat that just made a comment about that little bounce on the multi-viola. Multi-viola, I think that uh, said that little bounce on the multi-viola to hit the ledge is adorable. All right. And just all of this navigation, every single one of these things, timing that jump so you land right as the bomb explodes so you don't get knocked up from it and have to wait to fall back down. Like, every little time save is, like, at least attempted to employ somewhere in here. So, there you go. That, you know, if you would have come down here earlier into Kraid's Lair and had to just run through that room, it's way slower without Speed Booster. So that's why... Uh, he waited until after going through all of Norfair to come up here. Here comes the Kraid quick kill. Normally you shoot Raid a few, Kraid a few times and he stands up and he takes up the whole room. There's a way to just boom, boom, boom. I think it's like if you can hit him with one missile and three super missiles, that's what it takes to finish him off. So you, see, you saw he shot two missiles. The first one was to open his mouth right and then the second one was to start the damage and then three super missiles uh, to finish them off and then as you saw like the screen didn't even scroll <laughs> so you have to like navigate through the room without being able not that it's hard I mean you just run over and you jump and you shoot and then you're through the door but you can't see where you're going it's funny all right back out of Kraid's lair and just Still more than just epic movement. Placement of that power bomb just clips that block. It, I mean, that probably only saves like you know a quarter of a second or something like that. But again, this this run is just filled with all these kinds of things. And then like the arm pumping on top of everything else. It's like there's always going to be so much variation in this. And like the skill ceiling for running this game is just. I don't, I mean, like, Super Mario 64 is up there as far as, like, the skill ceiling for some of this stuff, but, man, it's just crazy. A nice, uh, Shine Spark here. Jumps up a bit to try to save some health before, uh, activating the Shine Spark. A perfect Mock Ball. Little Mock Balls through little places. And, like, doing the Mock Ball is not, like, just a simple thing. It's, like... You have to, you have to, you have to jump. You have to release jump and push jump again while you're in the air. I think you have to be holding dash through the whole thing, and then you have to like Hadouken as you hit the ground, with you know not like amazing precision, but some level of precision. And yeah, that room. Oh, he has speed booster now. Like I just lost track of what he even did. So you saw the X Factor super missiles finished off 
that guy bought the balloon pretty quick. But yeah, mock ball is just, it's not like super easy to do. There's another one, just to grab that energy tank. That's the, one of the three fastest energy tanks to grab, so that's why they get that one. So I think, yeah, I think X-Factors will be used on Dragon still. Here comes the full halfy. I don't remember where the name of this trick came from, but stores that shine spark, jumps up here, and then jumps again just to get a little elevation at the entrance of the room there, just to clear everything underneath as he flies across everything. Super huge time save. And he's going to use a special trick, I think. I don't think he messes it up because I don't think he would have saved enough time. But he uses another trick uh, to save a shine spark that he'll use on the way back too. So you can see in this room, normally you're not supposed to have enough space to charge up a shine spark. But if you, I mean, just watch his hands as you can see in the, in the hand cam down there. You can see he's timing the button presses of the dash button. It looks like the B button is his dash button. Uh, and then, so X Factor, Speed Boost, Shine Spark. Uh, he's gonna do another Shine Spark. Shine Spark just does a ton of damage. So you're not supposed to be able to hit Dragon with Shine Sparks, because you're not supposed to be able to run that fast. There's not enough space to shave, save up a Shine Spark in here. And so if you kill Dragon with a Shine Spark, you get this weird thing called Blue Suit, where basically you have like blue saved up. So as soon as you crouch, you can enter like shine spark mode essentially and then uh, use your shine spark to get back so kind of a little glitch there uh, really cool trick there's also another technique that you can use uh, called spike suit I think I don't know exactly how that works but it's another way of kind of saving a shine spark so you can use it to fly back across that room another mock ball just right at the end there to save more just the inputs are just so crazy cool. All right, so now all four bosses are done. I think he's got everything he's gonna collect. And so just not gonna waste time at the ship. It's far, it's far too inefficient to go to the ship to refill everything. So uh, he's gonna be trying to collect stuff as he makes his way out of the top exit of Meridi here into the top of Red Tower in Brinstar. Oh, another little quick farm there to grab some stuff. Yeah, I think he needed a little, little more, wanted to feel a little more comfortable with some more health and some more missiles. Yeah, I feel like there's so much happening, I just like can't even keep up with the amount of things that are happening <laughs> on the screen. <clears throat> So you'll see these ledge grabs as he comes up. Well, maybe, well, maybe not quite as much there. He was focused on trying to not mess up his jumps. <laughs> and you can see in the uh, the time up here, this, these are these splits up here show basically his progress through his speed run and where he is. Oh, by the way, that little trick where he kind of mock balls through the wall there, really cool. This shows basically how he compares to his previous world record so his previous world record the the time stamps for where he's get, gotten through different parts of the run are here he's only at 1.6 seconds ahead of where he was at this point and as he enters and as a matter of fact look at that he's 0.9 seconds uh behind where he was during his world record so he's actually behind like, if you had a side-by-side -side with his previous world record, he's behind that right now. Um, and I think part of it is because they found a new technique in, uh, in Turian here. Uh, where, I'll try to explain it real quick right now before he gets down in there, but there's a trick where you can, so, you know, you encounter the baby Metroid in Turian. Turian, I don't know. Um, and... Normally, the baby Metroid attacks you, sucks out all your health, and then, like, stops right when you're at one health. And then you need to, like, you watch this little cutscene where it realizes, oh, you're Samus, I'm gonna, you know, let you stay alive. Oh, turn the beams back on. Um, and then the baby Metroid, like, is like, oh, sorry about that, and then flies off. And then you have to go, like, refill your health and stuff like that. There's a way to skip it by just, like, basically making 
like dodging the baby Metroid as you run through the room and it's crazy to watch but they found a faster way of doing that now just watch these Metroid rooms by the way His hand position on the controller is always changing. I love watching these Metroid rooms. I'm going full on all resources. By getting the Metroids, like, stacked up like that. Oh, and he... <laughs> Oh my god. I'm not gonna go back and watch it. You can go back and rewatch it if you want. But like on that last Metroid room, he got hit by one of the little, oh, the Rinkas? Those little rings, those little bullet things that fly through the air. He got hit just as he fell through the door so he could damage boost past those other two Leaper guys. I don't remember what they're called, but watch the skip. It's crazy. And so what they used to do is they used to go like, I think they used to go, they used to go counterclockwise around the baby Metroid. And it was only discovered like a few weeks ago that you could do it, that you could do it clockwise instead. And it's, and it's, uh, it's faster and, and it saves like a couple of seconds, I think. And so, uh, yeah, they started employing that. So there's a glitch you can do right there. I have no idea how it works. It's called Zebatite skip, but you... You freeze one of those Rinkas, and you get hit, and then for whatever reason, you can kind of clip through that first Zebatite, those barriers that you're normally supposed to shoot a whole bunch of times with missiles. Um, and then once you skip past the first one, the subsequent ones don't bother spawning at all. They just don't generate. And so you can just walk through the rest of the room, basically. And so it's because of that trick that you only need 15 missiles and 10 super missiles uh, because otherwise you need a ton more to finish off mother brain the phase one while she's in the glass case like you have to shoot her with missiles and super missiles charge attacks don't work um, and so normally if you needed all those missiles to get through the zebatites like you'd have to collect way more missiles or you'd have to like break some of the zebatites and then go back to the missile refill station a couple rooms back and then come in and shoot a few more then go refill it and so you'd have to do this back and forth or collect a bunch more missiles so that zebatite skip uh really saves a whole bunch of time in the run. and so there were just enough missiles and super missiles to finish off the phase one of mother brain and so now basically this entire fight has to be done with charge attacks and charge attacks only and i think it takes it's like 60 60 charge shots um to finish off uh, Mother Brain in this phase two uh, of the phase two section of the fight. And so if you remember, he's got just enough energy tanks to survive the rainbow beam attack that she's gonna do in a little bit. Uh, but that's assuming he stays above 300 health, right? Because if he, because the, the attack does 300 damage. So if you have 300 health or less, you're, you're just gonna die from rainbow beam. And so, effectively, you only have, you know, from the time he was in, like, the Metroid's room, Metroid rooms, he's only got 99 health to work with through all of this stuff that he's been doing. This entire Mother Brain room and the entire Mother Brain fight. Um, and so, yeah, just the technique to stay out of danger of all of that stuff is also just kind of... It's, it, it's some of that... There's a lot of that kind of stuff that, like, you don't notice while you're watching it. Uh, because it's just made to look so easy, but there's so much technique that goes into it. <laughs> so he's got the keyboard out, he's talking to his chat, because he knows that it's, uh... <laughs> Would have liked more room for error here, he says. So, yeah, he's basically knows he's right on pace with his existing world record run. Uh, so he needs to hope that, like... Execution just has to be perfect from here on out to um, to make world record. So depending on the run, I think when they do 100%, I haven't watched a 100% run in a while, but there's a way to uh, like glitch this portion of the fight when you're getting hit by the rainbow beams, where essentially you can 
get hit by a rainbow beam and you have enough health at the time that you can take the hit from another rainbow beam like she'll just keep rainbow beaming you until you're down to low health right um but essentially what you can do is you can have enough health to take another rainbow beam but then if you take the damage quick to get down to low enough health before she starts like charging the attack like it'll trigger the the baby to come and attack her while you can still move and then if you can do because normally what happens is you take the hit from the rainbow beam and then you're just stunned and you have to like just sit there and watch the whole cutscene when the baby comes in and grabs her head and all that stuff well you can essentially trick the game into thinking that you know you well not really trick the game but essentially make it so you can still move around during the cutscene and when you do that you can continue doing damage to her while like uh, while the Metroid is like refilling her health and stuff and it saves a bunch of time during that fight but I don't think it's possible to do that during during this uh, any percent run so we're gonna see the last moon fall right here I'm gonna do it there pretty cool and then I don't think until I watched a speed run I don't even think I knew you could do this in the escape room this uh, shine spark here And then watching for some ledge grabs here. No, it's just wall jumping off of the edge of every one block high platform. <clears throat> there we go. So, yeah, his timer says 4046. Um, but I think after, like, because he uses, like, a manual timer. Uh, like there are some other runners that use they they have like a timer essentially hooked up to their system in a custom way it's pretty cool um where it just like automatically does their splits for them as they progress through the game and like you know somehow their computer is able to read the memory in the game while they're playing it and it will automatically track all of the splits but uh i think zost uses a manual timer like you know the space bar on his keyboard or something like that so he has to he has to like let go of the controller and hit the space bar and so he has to retime it and i think that after retiming it um managed to get uh 40 45 instead of 40 46 as this timer shows here uh clear time 27 minutes so that's the in-game timer i think zost's run and like only one other person uh, have 27 minute times on the in-game timer um, like the first and second place positions on the the leaderboard essentially so anyway pretty awesome I love watching this uh, this is my second time watching it because the first time I watched it I was just like watching it and then the second time I wanted to provide some commentary so hope you enjoyed that I hope the kids liked it uh, give me a call love you